We return now to our top story tonight about the situation at the intensive care unit at uh, Dunedin Hospital. Families have told us urgent surgeries uh, have been postponed for months, cancelled as patients have been wheeled into surgery or prepared for surgery anyway. And in at least one case, a patient has died while on the waiting list. But while there are eight ICU beds in the hospital, and that is up from six, even the Southern DHB CEO, Chris Fleming, has told us that's not enough yet. In a few minutes, we'll hear from Labor's health spokesperson, David Carter, who's also a local MP. He says the hospital is in desperate need of an upgrade and the intensive care unit is at least 10 beds short. But first, Bridget Burke reports on the stories of three Dunedin Hospital patients, and she begins with Bridget Telfer and her father, Merv. He has been postponed seven times. Seven times, and, and he was told in times. May he would need an urgent double bypass. Uh, 16th of May, um, he was told it was urgent, and they hoped to have it done in 30 days. And what he was told was that, yes, he's ha he definitely needs a heart valve replacement. He definitely needs a double bypass, but once they get in, it could be triple, it could be quadruple, they won't actually know and that his arteries were 80% blocked. OK, so, so he was told that you know, in May, and since then it's been postponed seven times, including twice after he was admitted to hospital. Mm-hmm, yep. So what's happening in Dad's case is um, apparently they are doing, we don't know how many, but some operations, uh, Dad's operation has now been scheduled for the 4th of August at Mercy Hospital, which is our private hospital. So whilst that's great for my father, it's still not going to have everybody seen to. It doesn't address the fact that there's other people waiting on lists in all sorts of areas that require urgent surgery. And to me, it's completely the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. And, and, and I know it all comes down to money, but how can it be cost effective when you're having people spending the night in hospital, you're having nurses attend to them, you've got staff ringing and reorganising, now you're paying God knows how much money to be seen at a private hospital. Like, you know, it, it, none of it makes sense to me. And meanwhile, the lifts grow longer. 68-year-old South Dunedin man Owen Glover suffered a heart attack three years ago. His daughter Donna says her father's heart surgery was postponed four times last year. They just keep sending letters saying, unfortunately, you know, your surgery has been, you know, delayed or put off or whatever. It will now be happening on da 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 whatever date, you know. Um, but, yeah, four times it was cancelled. Um, and, and the it first was, appointment was February that was cancelled? Yeah, and then March and then April and then July. And then he died in August. And then he died at the beginning of August and they had said that he would definitely be in um, towards the end of August for the surgery. But, of course, obviously, we didn't get that far. Donna says after not hearing from her father for a few days, her brother-in-law went round to see him at home last August to check on him. He took the door off the track and um, went in and was yelling, you know, yelling out and couldn't find him and walked into the bathroom um, and then, you know, walked through into his bedroom and he was dead on, you know, just dead on the floor like he just... And I just said to Pip, you know, the thing, you know, not only is the cancellation of all the surgeries bloody frustrating... I mean, obviously, it's it's come to the worst, you know, scenario occurred, obviously. Um, but, you know, he, he obviously, you know, he, he died alone, you know, because they wouldn't get their shit together, so to speak, and sort it out. Kelly Gibbs's 13-year-old daughter, Amber, spent the evening of the 9th of July in Dunedin Hospital prepping for spinal surgery for her scoliosis. We had her all gowned up, ready to go, and the next minute the surgeon comes into the room and says to us, we're sorry, but the surgery has to be postponed because a young guy who's had a heart attack has taken Amber's bed and ICU to you and they're needing a triple bypass. Kelly says her husband and parents all took time off work to help care for Amber in her recovery and for the couple's other children. But a lack of an ICU bed for their daughter put that on hold. Amber's got a lot of things wrong with her. She's actually got um, microcephaly, scoliosis, cerebral palsy, epilepsy, developmental delay, and she has asthma. So Amber's bound to a wheelchair for the rest of her life. She can't walk, she can't talk. She is totally reliant upon us, 100%. Um, she's a 13-year-old girl. Um, even though she's physically, she's, she's mentally, she's okay. 
She knows what's going on around her. She knows people. She knows animals. She knows her name. She, you know, she's mentally she's good. She knows what's going on around her. She's physically stuck in this body and can't do a thing. Kelly says because of her daughter's fragile condition, the surgery had been planned for a long time and there were risks. Obviously, so that we could get everyone, because it's a major surgery and there's a lot of risk for my wee girl, so um, obviously everyone wanted to be here and to be support and travelled from Invercargill to be here, taking time off work to be here, um, because it's hard work with the surgery. We have three other children as well. Um, so the going backwards and forwards to hospital with other children and the fact that we have to supply our own meals now um, because only the patients in the hospital get fed. Um, so, yeah, it, it was it's a big rigmarole anyway, having to stay in the hospital, let alone being really let down and the surgery not going ahead. The couple has been told Amber's surgery will happen this year but has not been given a date. For Checkpoint, Bridget Burke.